Hey everyone, this is Pig for Life. I started my uh, voiceover a little bit late because every single time T Man tells me that even when I start late, it still gets cut off. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we have the latest from Fans Toys. So I know you guys are giddy out there. All you guys come to the Fans Toys yard. Uh, we got Fans Toys Hitch FD26, which is one of the early numbers. I don't even know what number. The latest one is that we got in our little last one or in the sequences. It's like it's like 50 or something like that. Um, the box is pretty pretty standard, but we do, unlike Outrider or their Trailbreaker, we actually get the uh, Iwana's uh, artwork, which we definitely missed. A lot of people missed that. Um, that's all across. So you do have the little video instructions. Uh, if you're a fan of The Mandalorian, they decided to use The Mandalorian song this time. On the back, you see all the product images, him with his brother-in-arms, um, Outrider, as well as some of their upcoming figures, like um, uh, like their um, Jazz and so forth. So hopefully we get them um, pretty soon. Uh, as far as I can tell, it doesn't look like they made any mistakes with the, uh, the, the bio, but I never pay attention to that. We do have the styrofoam coffin as usual. Out of that, we do get his little protective plastic protecting the paint. Uh, really quickly, Alex G, Jermaine Sutton, uh, McLautier G, uh, Dare 27, Transpan 365, Scott Gomez, Mike Rogers. Uh, who else do we got? T-Man, Joe Spragan. I think I got most everyone. Mark Drennan. All right, I think I got Master Miller, Mike Rogers. Okay, I think I got almost everybody. But thanks for everyone for joining. Uh, so yeah, out of his coffin, he comes in robot mode. Mostly you can see already his his uh, lower half is reversed. Uh, there are a couple of other things that we need to take care of. So he also has a back scratcher, you know, just in case he needs to scratch his back, his robo back from itches. He has the alien face mask from the movie. Hey, Shin. Hey, Brian. True Star Screamer, as usual. Adam Bomb. Uh, he also has the alternate face here. And another alternate head. Um, actually, I guess they're both alternate heads. Technically. Uh, one is more like the green um, mask with the grates. And the other one is similar to the one we have here, except this is actually attached to the head. And it's silver as opposed to die cast, which we'll see here. We'll take a quick look at all of these. All right. Uh, let me actually scooch this down a bit. It's a little high. All right. So, yeah, out of box, there's a couple of things that we need to take care of. So, first and foremost, um, there are a couple of things inside the backpack that um, will most likely not be correct so what you want to come down here is um there's a little tab that goes into the back you just want to pull back on this and this rotates up uh depending on your figure you might have these tabs here folded down these are just gap fillers they're not absolutely necessary but go ahead and flip that out and there's another two on the inside right here you can see the hinge right there you can just kind of flip those out and again these are just gap fillers but wanted to make people aware of that the other thing is uh, you need to rotate at the waist. Um, the waist is really interesting, or the hips are really interesting. They're like double jointed. So you might want to pull them down a bit just to avoid any scratching. But then you can rotate 180 at the waist. And then, again, here's the peg and the slot for the backpack to close everything up. There we go. Uh, the other thing that you might have is his gun does actually extend so you can pull that out and then your hand might be positioned very oddly and very last but not least rotate these pieces up so you get his kind of back fins all right so here we are in robot mode let's take a quick look at the accessories Really quickly, the hand here, which looks kind of weird. It's almost like, kind of like a skeleton. Uh, what that does is if you want to replace the blaster cannon with the hand instead, what you do is pull off, pull straight off. Oh, what's going on? 
this entire casing. Uh, there is a little notch here that is supposed to be facing up. And the reason for that is that there's ridges on three sides and no ridge on the bottom. And so you need to make sure that, sure that matches up. Once you have that out, you'll see a couple of R's on this side. You'll, that's how you'll know, at least with this portion part, whether um, it's positioned incorrectly or not. If you do it the opposite way, that's not correct. So make sure that the two R's match up. Oddly enough, with the hand, they don't have an R. Um, they have kind of like this molding circle. So you can use that as kind of the indica indicator. So you want to slide that on. And then you have to remove the hand from the ball joint. And then once again, with this little notch here, you want to have that facing forward. Slide that all the way on. And then peg the hand back on. And with that, you have dual-handed hoist or hitch. Uh, you can transform in with either hand. It doesn't really matter. But I think most people will probably end up using one hand in the blaster. Again, with this R matching up with this other R. For some reason, this also comes apart. I don't really know why. But it does. And there's also a keyed notch here. So just be careful on that. Let's go up like so. And again, you can extend the very tip of his gun. All right, what else is there? Um, the two accessory heads. So like I said, if you guys are joining just a little bit late, the stock head is kind of interesting in the sense that um, this piece on the back is die cast and you separate it out and you need to for transformation unless you replace it with this head. All you have to do is just pull off the heads off the, off the ball joint and then you can pop this one on or you can pop this one on. Either one work, either way it works, but with this green toy head, you do need to replace the die cast, um, whatever cannon thingy. So we'll just go with the stock head for now, just so I can show you exactly how the transformation works with this one. Uh, but I'll also explain along the way how to transform the other two heads. This one's going to be ex essentially the exact same. This one you just rotate. Okay. So, really quickly, the mask, the alien mask from the one episode where they're in a movie. I don't really like how this pegs in. So, it has these two slots here, a, a rectangular piece that goes in the forehead. But then these two pieces here, um, they actually, like, poke into the eyes. I don't know why they decided to do that. Um, I mean, it's soft plastic, so I can't imagine it will mar or damage the eyes itself. But, in any case, this is how it looks. It holds on pretty st sturdily. And it does work. Uh, maybe it doesn't work with this head. I didn't test with this one. But it definitely works with this head. I, I remember testing it with this head. Yeah, so I don't know if it works with this one or not. It doesn't seem to because it doesn't have the same ridge. So maybe that's why they... Yeah, it doesn't work with the, this one. So unfortunately, if, you if you're using this one, you're not going to be able to use the mask. So, boohoo for you. All right, so let's go ahead and go with uh, articulation. Well, actually, sorry, I usually do a 360 first. Let's do a quick 360. You can see he looks very accurate to his really weird um, cartoon design. This looks kind of weird on the back. It's very flat, and it has just this cream paint over the orange pieces. So it looks kind of odd there. Our requisite QC sticker, I'm Inspector 21. He does have really nice um, chromed out, or I think these are die cast actually. They're all die cast uh, parts on these chrome pieces down here. He does have die cast feet. These feet pieces are die cast, these toes. Um, this chest piece, entire chest piece, kind of like with uh, Outrider. And I think that's that might be it aside from this piece here. Mm. Oh, yeah, and there's another um, hinge piece that's die cast. So, yeah, he looks pretty good. I mean, as good as you would expect a weird-looking hoist um, to, to look. Uh, before we get into articulation, as always, I'll go ahead and weigh him. So, in pounds or in ounces, he is... 
one pound point one ounce in kilograms that uh, or grams that is four hundred fifty six grams. All right, so got got that out of the way. We'll go into articulation very quickly. Um, very quickly, his head is on a weird, like, so it extends for transformation, but you can get a little bit of forward and back. I don't like that. If you can see really closely, uh, there's always, at least on mine, a gap between the base of the neck plate and the, the uh, body itself. I really don't dislike that. There's no way that I found to reduce that. So that's a bummer. But with that, you can get a little bit of like up and down on that panel. His head's on a ball joint, as you saw before. You can't go all the way around because of this thing, but you could always remove it if you want for some reason. He does have nice colored blue eyes. Just like Trailbreaker, he has a 360 on his shoulders on that weird square-shaped ratchet. He can go um, up like this, but because of the way his his uh, shoulders are molded and because of this um, side view mirror, you can't really go straight out. You run into this piece, so that's really unfortunate. He does have bicep swivel. This piece you can untab so that you can get more swivel and more positioning. I mean, again, you can try to get it, but it doesn't really work to get it all the way out. Uh, he does have a, a single jointed elbow, which is a little bit more than 90 degrees. He has a ball jointed wrist. He has a ball jointed thumb, a uh, ball peg thumb with one hinge at the thumb, one pin joint. And then each of the individual fingers are the same in, in terms of articulation. They're pinned at the base of the hand and then they have one additional um, pin joint. I do think the ball joint is a little loose on both hands. Uh, but you can do weird stuff like that. You can't unfortunately move it back because they don't have the slot cut out on the back. But you can do that. I don't know why you would want to do that. But you can do that. Uh, actually, it's for transformation, I believe. Alright, what else do we have here? So, um, he does have a waist swivel, as we showed before. Just be careful, again, because of the hips. Uh, they can run into interference, especially with this butt plate back here. Um, you can extend... The hips and lower them down if you want him to be a little bit taller or you can get him almost all the way up to his waist uh, i don't believe he has an ab crunch if i'm not mistaken yeah he does not have an ab crunch uh he does have a thigh swivel 360 degree thigh swivel a single joint um like 130 degree knee bend he does have a little bit of ankle pivot and this part locks in, but you do get a little bit of forward and back on, on, the, on the foot. If you remove this lock, you can get his foot to point down a bit, but you don't really want to do that. This is what actually keeps it from having, uh, keeps it solid. Let's see here on the backpack. We have these hinges that go around. And then again, this is tabbed in. So other than untabbing it and tabbing it in, there's no articulation there. Yeah, uh, and just like uh, Trailbreaker, he can't actually go out. So with his shoulders out like that, there's no like butterfly or anything like that. So somewhat limited, but better than some of the other options we have out there for Hoist slash Trailbreaker. Speaking of which, let's just do our comparisons now with some of the requisite figures. Uh, speaking of other Hoists out there, I did put a poll in the live stream. Um, what is uh, your... Hoist of choice. So we got one of them here with the floppy ankles. That was the biggest thing I didn't like about the um, MMC one. But he is shorter. And then who else do we have? We have MP44. And just because I got him recently, we'll throw in a seeker. Hopefully that does it for you guys and the comparisons. So yeah, this is the MMC one. You can see his hips are actually more accurate and so forth. This is um, the trail breaker. So you can see they are very different in terms of molding. And you'll see in the transformation itself, very, very different. 
there's only basically one part that's essentially the same, and that's the shoulder transformation. But like the entire chest is different. Um, the arms are remolded. All the legs are remolded. The backpack and how it transforms is obviously different. Um, even the um, head and everything like that. So he's essentially a completely new figure, which probably is why he still costs so much money. He's $190 on US retail, which frankly I think is way too much for this guy. But if you are a big Hoist fan, um, this probably is the, the best one that we've gotten so far. All right. So he is slightly smaller as well, as you can tell. All right, let's move these comparisons out of the way. Uh, I guess I'll do a quick 360 with the MMC one. I'm oh, sorry, I didn't have him straightened out. So you can see he's a, a good amount taller than the Ocular Max MMC one. This part reminds me a lot of the... Um, X Transbots one, it is just one giant piece that you can't really do a lot with. A lot cleaner overall, as you can see at the bottom here, and the backpack. So they did a good job. All right. With that, um, hopefully I didn't miss any donations or anything or anything like that. Um, but if you guys did want to see any other comparisons with some figures I have in my collection, I uh, usually do, uh, if you donate $1.99 or more, I'll do, uh, I'll try to grab a comparison if I have the figure, obviously, or I'll answer some questions. All right. Hey, G-Tony. I'm, I'm missing all the comments, obviously, since I'm busy trying to review this guy. But um, if you guys have any questions, just show them up a little bit later. Uh, I didn't show the hip articulation. Thanks. Thanks, T. I'm so dumb. Totally. I showed this extension, but he does have ratcheted hips that go forward 90 degrees and back not quite 90 degrees, again, because of the way it's uh, molded. It does go out to the side. And the only other thing I'll say about the um, this figure is that because of the way it transforms, you do get a lot of hollowness here. You kind of saw it in the thumbnail for this video. But it's not a huge deal, and it's kind of a, a compromise you have to make just to make this transformation work. So I don't mind it too much. All right, we'll go ahead and do... Thanks for the reminder, team man. Um, let's go ahead and do the uh, transformation. So this guy, like I said, is very, very different than the uh, Trailbreaker. I think he is a slightly easier, but uh, we'll, get, we'll get to that. So uh, first thing we'll do is let's just deal with the hands really quickly. So just collapse this cannon. You want to rotate out, outwards, 90 degrees. Same thing here. And we'll sh I'll show you specifically how to deal with the hands because they don't actually show you in the video or the instructions how to properly position the hand uh, to make everything work. So I'll make sure to show that off. Um, while we're here, just unpeg this section, flip up the forehead. Same thing with the green one. You just flip up the forehead and then you rotate 180 degrees. If you're using this head, all you do is flip it at 180 degrees. You don't have to obviously detach anything. Uh, you won't be pegging that on. So just flip it 180 degrees for that head. And then make sure when you tab this back in that the head is straight so that this part uh, of the forehead that you flipped up barely clears. And you want to make sure this is tabbed in all the way. I don't like the tight uh, tolerances that they have and clearances that I have here. Uh, they tend to do that a lot. I really don't like that. Uh, all right, so coming to the back, we're going to go with the backpack as we did before. We're going to pull back on that butt joint. We're going to extend this upwards. Oh, sorry. I also wanted to extend that entire neck joint that we saw before on the head. So coming down here, while we're here, we'll flip these panels in that we flipped out as space fillers. We're going to uh, flip out these tail, tail light sections here. We're going to untab this piece back here that was tabbed into this kind of gold die cast piece. We're going to open this up. So this opens up as a hinge. And then we're going to flip this down like so and then the way this works is you you pull this up and you want to rotate this down so you want to rotate this piece backwards out of the backpack that will fill in the back of the tailgate 
And then when you have this flipped up, this diecast piece is on kind of a weird L, upside down L shaped rail. So you want to pull this back and then straight down until it goes all the way down to the bottom. While we're here, you want to extend the backpack. So this orange piece from this green piece basically unpegs and extend telescopes out. You want to flip, flip it up 90 degrees, flip down the head and at the neck joint that we extended, and then we want to collapse it back in. From here, we're going to fold this piece flat on top of the head, essentially. And then we can close this up and close out those fins. So that's basically the backpack. And, and uh, lastly, flip in these fillers. I thought I did that before, but flip in both these fillers and these gap fillers. All right. So now this is the only part that's essentially the same as Trailbreaker, the arms. So you want to rotate these up. And again, we rotated these elbows 90 degrees outwards, right? So the same, it works the same way. So we want to unpeg the back of the arms like we would do with Trailbreaker. And then you have this extension uh, piece here on the die cast piece. You just want to flip this out and around like that. Same thing on this side, untab it, flip it out and around like that. Now coming in here, what you're doing here is going to rotate these inner hinge pieces 180 degrees. That will go all the way in. And then this piece will go into that, this um, shoulder ratchet piece will go into that gap while you simultaneously rotate this shoulder piece in on itself. So it's kind of hard to describe, but if you did Trailbreaker, you'll see that basically it folds in, on, collapses in on itself. And then there's very tight tolerances here with uh, the die cast piece. Uh, it makes me a little nervous that you'll scratch up the silver paint. So just be careful here, but rotate this all the way in on itself and it should sit flush and 90 degrees everywhere. With this piece, open up the window. And then we're going to rotate this. There's a small, there's a small uh, cutout for this die cast piece to sit in. And then from here, we basically just do some cleanup. We get the tab back here into the back of the tailgate. You get this cut out around these hinges. And then you have one small tab here that goes under the front wheel well. Okay. So same thing on the other side. The only difference is you have a, a hand here. And again, if you had a hand uh, on here, you could do that. And I didn't mention this before, but you can actually install, if you for some reason want his cannon to be on his left hand, uh, you can do the same thing. Just take off the hand and extend this out. So you can have the cannon on either hand. I don't think he ever had it on his left hand, but you never know with um, the original animation. They probably had one episode where it was on the left hand. So we flip this in again, 180 degrees, just this shoulder piece. And then we rotate this in on itself while coming in here. Come on. All right. And then this hand, it's very important that you have the hand positioned in this way. So you want to all the way back um, I think the instructions or the video kind of show it going in like this. This is not correct. You want the hands up, if you have both of them, all the way towards the back of the tailgate. And you want the thumb to the side. You need this clearance in order to get the legs to actually fill in and tab in correctly. So be, be very mindful of that. If you want, you can even probably rotate the thumb down into this gap here. The, the important thing is to have these fingers up and to the back not down like this, okay? All right, we'll just clean up this section again, flipping out the window, getting underneath here on this tab, getting around these hinges with that gap, and then that tab on the back. So now we can tab in both sides there. And now we deal with uh, the lower body. The lower body is super easy. Nothing really to um, um, complain about. So we're going to, 
bend 90 degrees at this hinge here at the waist. And the reason we need to do that is it allows us to get these hips in without running into the bumper. So first thing we'll do is do the cleanup on the legs. We want to pull down these double hinged pieces on the back of his hips. We want to flip up those locking mechanisms on the toe. That will allow us to flip up the toe 90 degrees. And then the last thing we really need to do is clean up these sections here. So these aren't telescopic joints or telescoping joints. So you want to untab and pull out. There's a little hinge here that telescopes out and then you rotate around. You want to flip this long piece underneath itself and flip this piece up. And then you want to rotate all the way around so it kind of lines up with this section here. And then you want to telescope it closed. Same thing on this side. We're going to telescope this hinge out, up and around. This small piece flips up. This other piece flips down on itself. And once you get this up and around, you collapse that telescoping piece. On one foot, the, what is, what side is this? On the left foot, there's a piece that you pull out. It's a, ta a tab that will correspond to this tab here, to this slot here on this foot. Before we do that, we want to collapse the hips all the way up so that they are flush with one another. So you can see how that one goes all the way up and in on that double hinge. There should be no gap. That should tab in like so, like that. And then this will all, oops, what happened here? Sorry about that. There we go. With that all done, um, the only thing you gotta be mindful of when you close this up, again, is the hand, but also these little tabs. So these little tab things that we flipped up need to sit inside of these green pieces that stick out here. Everything else is kind of a blind tab. So just make sure you push this in. Oh, the fingers came down a little bit. So again, make sure that those fingers are all the way up. I don't think, this, yeah, one of those flaps was not all the way in. Come on now. What's going on? Okay, there we go. Yeah, so once, oh, nope. One last thing I forgot, I'm dumb. One thing I forgot is that uh, it has a really interesting rotational joint on the wheels. You need to rotate this um, clockwise on this side and counterclockwise on this side. That's probably why I was having issues closing it up so that uh, you don't see silver paint here anymore. So when it's in robot mode, you'll see it flat and with silver paint. When you rotate it around, you'll see it rounded and no, uh, no paint. Sorry about that. going on uh this do, this is not right it should definitely be oh yeah that side got in correctly but this side is not what's going on here okay there we go all right so now this is done correctly everything should be up and you'll feel it definitively clicked and then again you'll see that the fingers are uh, over top of the foot. And lastly, you just need to adjust the side view mirror so that they're kind of straightened out. And that's really it. Sorry, that took a little bit longer than I was expecting, but I did want to explain the hands especially. And this is his alt mode, which looks very good. It looks very much like the um, Trailbreaker. Uh, obviously, I can't show you the Trailbreaker transform because he's in robot mode, uh, but he's essentially the same. The only thing is, obviously, this section here is different. The taillights are slightly different. The back is slightly different. But by and large, this is exactly the same. A um, couple of things to note is that they made a really interesting design um, choice. You can see that this is kind of like um, uh, black here. They did that to kind of mimic what I think the um, animation model showed, which was 
this was actually an open space as opposed to a closed off window and section like that. I don't know why they did that. Um, I think it would have been better just to paint it green, but I guess they wanted to play, pay homage to the authentic model. The doors can't open like Trailbreaker. Um, just be careful. There is some friction here and rubbing, but you can't open it on both sides. The, the wheels are nice and rubber and roll very well. Obviously feels very hefty. Uh, the, um, what's it called? The trailer or, I don't, I don't know, the towing thing. It is a little bit interesting how they designed it. They designed it with one wheel here. And I don't know if that, that was ever something that they had. Neither the toy nor the animation had it like this. Uh, it was usually wider at the back and it had two wheels. I don't know if this is maybe more accurate to the real life vehicle. But in any case, to use this, you just pull this down like so. And then you have the wheel here. Just fold this back up. And uh, who do I have? Oh, obviously I have Streak. I wonder if this, this will work with Streak. Uh, kind of, kind of, sort of. So that's how it's supposed to work. You can see he's about the same length as Streak. Maybe a little, a tiny bit shorter with the bumper. Um, about the same width. Uh, since I've been doing this lately, I'll bring out the MP44 trailer just to see if he can fit. I believe he does. Although, actually, I'm not sure if with the, if the, the height of the... Oh, uh, yeah, he barely seems to clear. Oh, actually, no, I don't... Oh, there we go. Yeah, he does. He does get in. So, yeah, if you're a stickler for getting your MP cars into MP44's trailer. There you have it. And then again, you just flip this back up and on the back of the head, like so. Uh, as far as any of his accessories and using them in alt mode, aside from swapping of the heads or swapping of the hands, obviously you don't have really any use for those. All right. All right. I know I probably missed a lot of these questions or comments. Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't think I missed many then. Hey, Tony, uh, 77, Tony, 77. You missed basically a lot of the transformation and so forth. All right. Hopefully, if I missed any questions... Oh, is the orange, pa orange painted? Um, so some of it does seem to be painted. Uh, I want to say all of it is painted, but it's really hard to tell. Like with this, um, I don't know if it's painted. I think it is, but it's very hard to tell. I'm, I'm not going to lie. You know, obviously the green is, but I'm trying to find like um, hidden areas where the hinges would be that whether you could see if it's painted or not, like the inside of here. Um, and I wasn't really able to tell. I feel like it is painted though. I feel like the orange is painted. Um, I don't think the hips here are painted though, or the knees. I feel like maybe this backpack is, but again, don't, don't quote me on this. I'm really terrible at figuring out whether there's paint or not. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Is the chrome too much? Uh, the chrome, um, I actually like the, the metal um, chrome here. This is all like die cast pieces. I think it looks really good. It's interesting that they um, made a design choice for chrome there and then silver and all the other places basically. But it looks really good. All right, so let's go ahead and get this guy transformed back and we can finish off the review. He's pretty simple, but I think his uh, transformation is pretty satisfying. All right, so let's go back. So the first thing we'll do is just pull down on the legs here. All right, and then um, let's go ahead and separate the two halves with that big honking tab at the bottom. And then we want to bring the hips down. We want to bring those down pretty quickly so that we um, make sure we don't, when we, if it actually flips up, we don't scratch the um, bumper. From here, we can flip up these 
back of the hip pieces there or back of the butt. I don't know what you want to call those. We can flip out the toe, flip out this heel toe locking mechanism on both sides. Uh, before I forget, we want to rotate these wheels back. So rotate them all the way around. It's not just the wheels there. It's actually on this um, plastic piece. So again, you want to rotate them until they're flat. And they do have a kind of a clicky ting sound when you, when you get them in position. Extend this uh, telescoping piece, rotate it around, get these flaps in line with one another, rotate it down, and then close this telescoping piece, as well as making sure it's tabbed in tightly on the front. Same thing on the other side, rotate this around, flip it open, get it around to the side, the inner part of the leg, close that up. All right, so the lower body's done. I think I don't think I missed anything there. We'll go to the upper body or the back of the cab right now. We'll untab this section here. And we want to get these pieces out. And then you want to take one of the arms. Uh, we'll flip these down. You take one arm at a time and you just kind of basically want to work it out. Bring it around. This inner green piece needs to rotate 180 degrees. And then you want to rotate the shoulder out. 90 degrees. You can rotate the elbow to be in the correct orientation. And then lastly, you want to get this shoulder piece, this, this uh, die cast piece rotated in like so. And then you're going to flip this down and there is a little tab here that goes into a tab slot there. For this particular arm, you do want to extend the, the gun barrel again which is kind of annoying to do, especially because this piece wants to do that. Oh, jeez. Get this in like that. Okay, that's the correct orientation. There we go. All right, same thing on the other side. Bring out the arm. Rotate the green piece 180 degrees, and then rotate out 90 degrees at the shoulder. Rotate this die cast piece in, and then tab in the back of the arm. Get these elbows rotated 90 degrees to the correct orientation. And we'll get them down like so. While we're here, because it's easy to forget, go ahead and get in these um, gap fillers on the inside of the body here, as well as these up here. These are a little bit harder to get at. All right. While we're up here, untab this section, fold in the tail lights. We'll open this up. And we want to push the head up. We'll detach the die cast piece, rotate 180 degrees, fold the forehead down, the crest down, whatever you want to call it, tab this die cast piece back in. All right, where were we? All right, while we're here, this piece, again, rides up on the rail, so it goes straight up and then goes forward. And then it's going to lean back like so. We're going to rotate this orange piece 90 degrees inward. This is going to flip up. And there's two tabs, one on each side of the orange pieces, like so. That will expose this tab on the gold piece where you want to fold up the bumper or the, the license plate piece and then tab that in. We want to extend and telescope the orange piece back, rotate this in, making sure that these, see this, these tabs, gap fillers or whatever, tend to flip in very easily. So this one, let me get back out. These two are out. 
So rotate this 90 degrees, collapse this in to lock the backpack in place. And then we're gonna close this up with this butt tab going into this orange slot back here. Come on. There we go. Flip open this piece to fill in the backpack gap with these green painted pieces. And then collapse the head or neck or whatever. Remember Extendor? I think his name was Extendor. That's what it reminds me of He-Man, that silver knight looking guy that could extend his neck and his arms. I think his name was Extendor. I remember having that toy. And with that, we are back in robot mode with Hitch. So final thoughts are, uh, overall, I like this figure. I don't think it's a $190 figure. Uh, let's just get that out of the way. I think, I honestly think these uh, toy prices are getting ridiculous. But when you have figures like um, New Age um, Skyfire going for $160 as a Legends scale Skyfire, um, I guess in respect to that price, this guy seems like a bargain. Um, some of the articulation is severely limited, like in the shoulders. But uh, again, if you need to have a hoist in your collection, this definitely is the best one out so far. Um, fun transformation overall. Uh, nothing feel like feels like it's going to break. Uh, just a few minor clearance issues. Um, so overall, I, I am pretty happy with him if you, if you can stomach the price tag. But he feels great, feels hefty. Nice paint, as always, with fans toys, especially this green, this nice metallic flake green. Um, lots of die cast in here with the feet, the thighs, the shins, these chrome parts here, and uh, this chest and throughout. So overall, I think I'm very happy with him. Um, as a hoist, I just don't value hoist all that much. So it's up to you whether you want to spend that much on this guy or one of the alternatives. Extendor, that's what his name is. For some reason, I thought it was Extendor. Thanks, Matty the Dentist. Mechanic? Uh, I don't. Uh, Mechanic was a different one. All right, so I think that's really it for. Oh yeah, Ma McLutier G L Lutier. I never know how to pronounce that. He says a spudget-free transformation here, there, and back. That is pretty interesting for uh, fans' toys. Um, no weird hip limitations or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with him overall. Yeah, this gold is chrome. Uh, this gold here is metal chromed. I guess I don't. I don't know. What do you want to call it? All right. Did I miss any questions? Hopefully, I didn't. Moist. It wasn't he also a He-Man figure. What was that? Oh no, maybe not. Maybe I'm thinking Moss Man. I just remember that green. Uh, green furry He-Man figure that smelled terrible. I don't remember which one that was. Maybe that was like Moss Man or something like that. <laughs> Trans fans got it for one forty two thirty nine. That's a much better better price. If he was one hundred fifty or below, I don't think I would have any problems with this. But yeah, the two nearing two hundred dollars for. Uh, a hoist. Um, it's kind of a tough pill to swallow for sure. Or right, did I miss any questions or any donations? I don't think I did. Hopefully I didn't. Usually uh, TM is really good about tracking down and keeping track of all the questions that I may have missed while transforming. Do his eyes light up? No, they do not light, light up. Yeah, so uh, Toy Dojo obviously is my sponsor. They're they're in the comment section uh, or the live chat. They do still have some of these. I still have about twenty of these um, uh, ready to go out. Uh, twenty of them are already packaged up and ready to go. So they will be going out uh, tomorrow morning. Priority mail, so please enjoy. Skunkor, not Skunkor. Skunkor is the black and white one, but there was like a green one that was kind of smelly too. Green furry He-Man figure. I'm sure somebody knows. If you guys uh, enjoyed the review, please give it a like, share, and subscribe. Always appreciate it. One really finally closed the gap on 8,000 8, subs. Um, I know I haven't been putting out a lot of videos, 
That's just me being lazy, but would love to get to that milestone. I'll probably do a giveaway if I get to 8,000. I think I'm only like 30 people away or something like that. Yeah, I think it was Mossman as well. So yeah, if you enjoyed it, the 83 of you that are on here, if you enjoyed it, got something out of it, or if some of my transformation tips helped you out, especially the hand positioning, because I know I checked both the manual and the online video, and neither of those showed those clearly. Um, just remember to do that. And again, I'll, I'll show that off just really quickly since I mentioned it before. Again, the right arm can also... Um, oh, actually, I'm lying. I thought it could. You can pull this off, but I guess you can't actually... There's no removal joint like on the other side. So I'm lying. I could have sworn I saw that. So unfortunately, you have to keep him left-handed with his blaster. Or I guess that would make him right-handed since his hand would be on his left hand always. Oh, good thing I checked. Fact check my own self. Uh, what are the results from the poll? Oh yeah, the, thanks. Let me re, let me uh, end the poll real quick. So the poll was, uh, which is your MP uh, hoist of the various t options that we currently have? So we don't have an official Takara one announced yet, even though we have Trailbreaker, but we do have Fans Toys Hitch, as we see here. We have X Transbots uh, Pain or Pain or Pain. I don't remember how to pronounce it. He was a Pain. Um, and the Ocular Max is one, which we have here with the Gimpy Ankle. I forget what his name was. And then we also have the Bad Cube Lori. So all of those are quite old now. So the results were 68% uh, went with Fans Toys. Not a surprise there. 25% with X Transbots. I'm surprised about that. Um, they did have actually some of the cool accessories. I remember they had like the arms and pinchers that you could attach to um, the backpack, I believe. And then 0% uh, with Bag Cube and 6% with, um, with MMC, as you see here. So yeah. I think that's it for today, everyone. Hopefully, uh, you guys got something out of this. I enjoyed it as usual. I will be back um, maybe even tomorrow night. So I've been uh, kind of lazy. I'll show you what's coming tomorrow night. Uh, tomorrow night, I'll be doing, or in the next couple of days, I'll be doing a review of DZF Continuum. So that's the MMC... Uh, G1 version of their Desaurus. Um, the difference being obviously a lot of the deco. Some of the head sculpt uh, wings here are very different. Um, and obviously the, the one of the big things that people were looking forward to is that um, eagle, eagle Breast is part of this figure. If I can get him on tab. So I already did a couple of shorts on the transformations of these guys, Eagle Breast and Tiger Breast. Uh, but this figure will actually have uh, Eagle Breast included, since that was a G1 feature. And you'll see that his uh, sculpt for both his robot and his alt, uh, alt mode are quite different. So I'll do a comparison of that if I can, or at least the robot mode so you can see that. Yeah, uh, Cameron says uh, the continuum colors look better. I agree. Where's my other? Hold on, I'll go get the other one just to show you really quickly. Yeah, I do like the darker colors, but you know, if you're an IDW fan, you're definitely used to seeing these kind of like lighter uh, colors on the IDW comics. So it makes more sense. But this definitely looks more G1-ish. And you can see that the heads are drastically different and so forth. Most of the molding is the same in his robot mode with the exception of the wings and the head. But in the alt mode, you'll also see that the, they're a bit different. Oh, and the other thing that you'll see is his uh, fingertips are clawed in this one and not in, in this one. But yeah. Anyway, this will, this will be coming soon as well as the official uh, video manual for this guy. 
All right, did I miss anything else? All right, fantastic. Well, I appreciate you guys' time for the last hour. Uh, if you're catching on the rewind, if you have any questions, comments, or something that I might have missed, leave them in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, once again, if you want to order um, this guy who we just did a review on, he's not even in frame, uh, go ahead and click on the link below, and you can get that from Toy Dojo. And if you're on the East Coast, uh, you might actually get that sent out from me. All right. That's it for today, everyone. Hope you have a good one.